Thank you for tuning in. This is my story about going to jail in Thailand. So I'm a professional poker player. I'm living in Bangkok with two of friends in a place called Nana. We've got quite a few other friends in Bangkok as well. Uh, one night we're chilling, playing poker, and all of a sudden our friend's girlfriend storms in and is looking for a boyfriend. She seems pretty mad because um, she can't find him. They must have had an argument. Um, but she's not really taking no for an answer when we're kind of like, he's not here. So we're like, yeah, feel free to, to have a look around, but we're not really dealing with her the way that she wants to be dealt with. I think she wants us to pander to her a little bit and try and call him or something like that. But we're just busy doing our own thing and like, feel free to have a look around and then feel free to leave afterwards. Eventually she does leave. And one of my friends I live with goes for dinner with his girlfriend. And my other friend and I are relaxing, playing poker. About half an hour goes by and we hear a knock at the door. Uh, we shout come in because most people that know us from, from living in Bangkok uh, know that we leave the door open when we're in. So most people that turn up usually just walk in. Uh, so it's a bit weird to hear the door knocking for one. So I shout come in, no one comes in. Uh, my friend at this point told me that he heard the door open and close again. Uh, the, we hear the door knock again and I get up to go and see what's going on. I get to the door and I see the condo owner, which is an elderly Indian man and then four Thai policemen, two either side of him with their sort of guns pretty visible holstered. And I'm a bit sort of like taking a step back going like, what is going on here? Um, and they tell me that uh, the Indian guy tells me that they're here to investigate a disturbance. And I can kind of like thinking back, I can see them like with their torches, like looking into the place and stuff. And I'm a bit like, well, I don't really know what's going on here. I don't have anything to hide. And my assumption was that given they're here to investigate a disturbance, that the girl that had been raging, looking for a boyfriend had been screaming her mouth up in the corridor and has, you know, maybe one of the other people in the condos have uh, called to say that there's an issue and to check it out and stuff. So I was like, yeah, feel free, come in. I've got nothing to hide. What a mistake that was, obviously. Uh, never invite the police in, I guess, if you don't have a reason to. Um, so now the police are straight inside. I think they're just gonna look around, see there's nothing going on and leave, but they're in all the drawers, all the cupboards, and my friend smokes weed and has a small bag of weed, uh, which is illegal in Thailand, massively illegal. So, and obviously that was in the back of my mind when I invited them in, should have been not being a weed smoker myself. I probably should have been a lot more careful. I'm clearly in the wrong here for inviting them in, but at the same time, it's like completely unexpected that that's what they were looking for. But here we go. Now they found the bag of weed. They find the bag of weed. I'm, we're starting to crap myself a little bit because I don't know what's about to happen now because uh, I know it's illegal in Thailand, but I don't know what the ramifications fully are. Uh, they kind of stopped looking around the place now. It's almost like, all right, we found what we came for. We got them, let's see what we can do. Um, but we're trying to obviously mitigate the damage here. We don't want just gonna get fined for huge amounts if we can get away with less, etc. So we're a bit like, all right, what, what do you want from us? Like, what's going on? As we're sort of doing this, more and more police officers start to turn up and they do start to look around a little bit more. Uh, I sort of say, yeah, come and look in my room. There's absolutely nothing going on in my room. Um, as I do that, this is how much they weren't really paying attention at this point. Uh, I go and show them my room, my friend goes into his room, gets rid of all of his weed. So they found like, I think what they actually found was uh, a 12 grand bag. I don't know how much that is, but I just remember it being 12 grams from later in the story. But he probably had another 100 grand bag in his room uh, that he managed to just throw out the window when they weren't searching. So it wasn't like, they, they it didn't feel like they were there to just like screw us over. They were like, all right, we got what we want. Um, now we're just gonna probably get some money out of these white guys. But it was a delicate situation because we just don't want to offer money because like maybe that gets taken the wrong way. Maybe that gets us in even more trouble. Uh, now there's more and more police officers turning up. They've asked for my passport. Uh, we've texted the boyfriend of the girl um, who then turns up to, so, cause he feels guilty about the whole situation because he's now realized because he's got a text from his girlfriend and she's texting going, ha ha ha, if you're gonna screw me over, I'm gonna screw your friends over. So. And he doesn't know what's going on. So he, and then he finds out that the police are at our place. And then he realizes he put two and two together that she's the one that's actually called the police and told them we're having a drugs party. So now the boyfriend's turned up and there's us two. My friend's high, but he's hiding it pretty well. Uh, the condo owner's now called his grandson and his brother to come over. So now there's like 15, 16 people in this condo all just kind of standing around. And also we were playing poker. Gambling's illegal in Thailand. They see poker stars pop up my, on my computer. And I'm like, for God's sake, one time, don't pop up on my computer. And then there was this young police officer who was like trying to like make his mark, I guess. And he's like, oh, we've got to confiscate the laptops now. What were you doing on there? And I'm like, oh, it's, it's play money. Like, 
you can't prove it's real money, but they were like, oh, well, I guess we'll get the technician to go and check those. I'm like, wonderful. At this point, I'm just, I'm absolutely terrified. I'm basically speechless. I'm sitting there going, my life is flashing from before my eyes. I'm being arrested for weed, I'm being arrested for gambling. Um, who knows what else is going on? And all I'm getting from the condo is like, you didn't have to invite them in, you know? And I'm like, oh, that's, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. The grandson of the condo owner kind of takes over a bit more because he speaks Thai, but he doesn't read Thai. Um, he's Indian, but he's lived there his whole life. So he speaks Thai and he's basically saying, um, you're gonna be fine, it's weed. They're gonna legalize weed too in Thailand anyway. By the way, that still hasn't happened. Um, but they're gonna try and scare you, get some money out of you. Uh, they wanna go to the station and they want you to take like a test to see if you've been smoking the weed. Um, and I was just like, well, I'm fine to go to the station because I haven't smoked any weed, but my friend is high right now, but I couldn't really say that out loud. And I'm trying to say to him like, we can do that and I'll be fine, but he might not be fine. And he was just like, well, we should go to the station. The nicer we are with them, the better they might be with us. On the other hand though, everything I'd read was don't go to the station. That's like the worst thing you can do. Try and sort it out here. Cause then once it's like, more and more people involved. But at this point, you know, I didn't have that much money. I didn't want to be like spending like a thousand pounds on a fine. Um, but at the same time, I didn't know the right language to use to make sure that I didn't get in trouble. So it was a bit more like gauging everything as it came along. Like you're kind of like a rabbit in the headlights. You're kind of listening to people because you're trusting their advice. Uh, so we do eventually agree to go to the station. They've got our passports, they've got our laptops, they've got our iPads. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty terrified at this point. Luckily, we told our friend that went out for a beer with his girlfriend just not to come back to the apartment, at least for that night. Go and stay at his girlfriend's house and just avoid getting involved in this at all. And that worked out pretty well for him. Now we're at the station, which is this weird, like we literally got a motorcade to the station. There must've been about, uh, and we've got handcuffs on. So this is like super scary. Um, we're, we're being driven around Bangkok in like a line of police cars with the, the, the lights flashing. And I'm just like, I feel like I'm absolutely, mastermind criminal that is being arrested for being at the, essentially in the wrong place at the wrong time, I guess, because I didn't smoke weed and the girl's the one that reported to us to the police and I shouldn't have invited them in. So everything, it was, it's just a disaster. So we're in this sort of like police shed thing now. And at this point, the, the grandson is with us. My friend's girlfriend is with us. And the boyfriend of the girl that called the police is also with us. Uh, we are told to do a urine test and we're there and we're taking loads of photos. So we're taking photos with the bag of weed. We're taking, and literally it's, it's ridiculous. It's like, there's us just taking photos and we're like pointing down at the bag of weed. I don't know what that's for. I don't know whether that goes on a file or that's just them so they can giggle at us afterwards. It was just, a lot of the stuff was like, uh, just sign here, do this. And like the signing bit was where I kind of started to draw the line. They gave us a piece of paper to sign. It was all written in Thai. And at the bottom, we basically had to say that we agreed that what the paper had said. And we also signed to agree that they'd done everything by the book and they'd offered us a translator, which they obviously hadn't. But they're implying that if we sign this, that we, they're gonna rip it up afterwards and it's all gonna be fine. Which I'm a bit dubious of because I'm just basically signing my life away here to agree. I don't even know what I'm agreeing to. So my friend's girlfriend who's with us, this is the guy that has been smoking weed, uh, she reads it all, but she's quite timid as a character. So they're kind of like being really, the police being like, yeah, make them sign, make them sign. And we're just like, just tell us what it says. We're happy to sign. We just want to know what it says. But they're being really aggressive and it's a tough spot for all of us. And essentially what she says is, you're saying that friend, of, friend that has smoked the weed is saying that he is signing for possession and because he smoked the weed. Uh, by the way, the piss test came back saying that his was off the charts and mine was super trace so wouldn't count as positive so they basically said it looks like he's just smoked and you just got secondhand smoke which is exactly what had happened so he's signing for possession and he's signing for using the weed and i'm signing as a witness to that and i'm very like okay i'm quite happy to be a witness and i'm feeling a bit bad for him at this point but at the same time like what do you do I'm, at, I'm off the hook and as for the laptops and stuff they were like oh so what's all this because they could see my spreadsheet with all my results and i was like oh no 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 that's for my student i don't play it's all play money and they seemed to be happy enough with what they had that they just kind of dropped the gambling a lot, the, the gambling part. So I was like, pretty happy with that. So at this point I'm like, oh, this is going great. And I'm about to sort of say, okay, so when are they gonna rip all this up and when am I gonna to get to go? Uh, and, and next thing we know, we're being walked into like more of a reception area. We're sat in front of this sort of admin reception policeman and now he's looking through our passports 
and just short backstory that we'd got new passports in Thailand because we'd run out of pages, me and my friend. Um, but everything was in order. We'd always kept on top of our visas. It's actually really annoying to keep on top of your visas when you live in Thailand for a long time, but we 100%, everything was accurate. And he was reading through the passports and he was asking about it and we explained to him, we had the letter from the embassy, we had the letter from the UK embassy and we had the letter from the immigration in Thailand to say everything was fine. Here's the old passport and that visa stamp is valid until the end of that. And then here's the new passport, which we then get a new visa stamp in should we get a new one. And he just looks at us and goes, I don't believe you. And I was like, well, this is ridiculous because I haven't lied and I followed all of your processes. So now I'm kind of just feeling that they're just trying to intimidate us and trying to just make us feel bad. The fact that he would just so brazenly say he didn't believe me when everything I said was the truth. So I've got my guard up a little bit with this guy, not a big fan of him at all. Uh, but we're, we're, I'm still pretty relaxed at this point because I'm like, okay, when are we, when are we gonna pay the fine? And the, uh, the uncle of the condo owner, or sorry, his brother, he's there like, well, you're gonna have to play this game in a minute where you, you play, he calls it the elephant game where you're like, ooh, uh, to see if, like whether the bribe amount is okay. And eventually you come to an agreement and then you can go home. And I'm like, we've got, those, we've got our friend outside in a car with cash. So we can probably cover everything and then this should all be fine. We then get walked out into another room and they confiscate our phones and they confiscate our, our short, a lace through our shorts. So I guess that's so you can't attack someone or hang yourself, I guess. Uh, but they leave us our wallets and we're like, oh, great. So this is the bit where we um, get to pay the fine, right? Uh, then we get taken into a cell, which is, I guess is a holding cell within the jail. This is not a proper jail, this is a holding cell. And then they, the, they slide the jail thing across and I'm like, oh, they're really going for this scariness thing. Now, this, I do really feel like they're gonna leave us here. And then my friend, so it's me and my friend in this jail cell and all of a sudden his girlfriend comes through and she's just crying. And I'm like, please tell me that this is not happening. Like this, this cannot be happening. This is, this is not, this is not happening. No, this is not happening. And she's like, you're gonna have to stay here overnight. You know, it's, it's too late to bribe or pay a fine because it's got so far along in the system because someone else has got involved and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just there like, I just, I just can't speak. I'm just like, what, what? She's crying, but that's just, you kind of go into like fight or flight a little bit and you're a bit like, well, that's super unusual. And I'm just thinking about other stuff now. And I knew that my visa was coming up in probably like three days, maybe slightly longer. And I had a feeling they would maybe try and make that an issue for me as well. So I was a bit like, are we definitely going to the court tomorrow? But can you please make sure if we are staying here overnight that we're definitely going to see the court tomorrow. That's like a really big thing because if not, my visa is going to run out and they're going to get me on that as well. And then she comes back saying, no, you can't go to court tomorrow uh, because it's after midnight now. So you're going to be going, to, you're going to have to stay here for two nights and you're going to have to go to court the day after. And I'm like, that's how it starts, right? So now we're in jail. It's a hardwood floor with like a hole for a toilet, which is absolutely stinky and disgusting with bugs around it. Uh, our friends bring us some food and some water so we can still get visited and whatnot. And we're basically using the 1.5 liter bottle of water as a pillow. Uh, and we're, me and my friend are just not really talking, not because we're angry at each other, if anything, we're like in this together and we're all just like silent with our own thoughts because we're just like, what is going on? And where is this going? Didn't get any sleep that night at all. It was pretty surreal and in the, in the other cells they were all re reasonably full um i remember there was these girls that came in pretty late and they looked pretty out of it and then all of all the way through the night you just hear them screaming like they're having like the worst calm downs ever and it's just it's like a cycle of people coming in and out so you just you're not sleeping and plus you've got so many things that you're thinking about you're like what is going on it's just impossible to sleep anyway um eventually another guy gets put in our cell and I think he knew the guards because they just gave him his phone and he was just chatting on his phone all night, which is great, wonderful for me, trying to get to sleep, but at least he was happy. The next day, a guard comes in and I think he's like half Italian, half Thai. And he's a bit like, oh my God, like how has this happened to you guys? Like such a small amount of weed, but um, it's um, like, do you know, like maybe you can like, did you not, could you not pay the fine? And we were like, we were trying to, can you t maybe like help us? Is it too late now? And he goes, it's probably too late now, but I can go and see what I can do. He comes back and he's like, well, you've got, you were caught with 27 grams of weed and that is the book, like over the threshold for at least six years in jail. And we were just like, what? This is like, like heart sinking stuff at this point. And we're just like, what? And he goes, but what I could, I can't stop it. But what I could do is I could try and get the amount reduced 
to get you into like a lower band. So maybe maybe it's a two year thing, maybe it's a big fine, but at, at this point, like, and we're just like, yeah, anything you can do to help would just be amazing. Like, what do you need to help us? And he's very much like, well, you know, you can't tell anyone that I'm helping you. Um, we'll go like, but first we had to go and do our fingerprints. We had our fingerprints, like we had to go out and do that, which for us was just like great to just kill time in the day. Cause it's like, it's pretty long just sitting there with your thoughts in a Thai jail cell thinking you might be going to jail for six years. Um, so he's off doing, we do our fingerprints. He's off sort of hopefully sorting it out for us. Then we got our friends come to visit and they were just like, what the fuck man? Like, how has this happened? And we're like, I don't know. And we're, we, you tell this like the, the soul was kind of just coming out of us because we're just like hardly slept, super stressed. They can't really do anything to help us. Language barriers are just super annoying when it comes to all the admin type of stuff. But they're just like anything we can do to help, which is really great to have them around. Uh, and we told them about this Italian guy and they were like, oh, so so what's he said? Like 27 grams. And then, and then the one, one of our friends was like, well, wasn't it only 12.7 grams? I was there because it was the boyfriend. It was only 12.7, what are you talking about, 27 grams? And we're like, no, don't rock the boat here. Like, don't mess around with this because, you know, he said he's going to help us and he said we can't tell anyone. So please don't push that, but we'll just see how that goes. He goes outside. He's obviously then asking about it. Then the Italian man comes back inside and just starts screaming at us. He goes, I am not going to help you. I'm going to make it as bad as I can for you guys. This is ridiculous. I try and help you. I try and tell you not to tell anyone. And that's what you do. Uh, I hope you go to jail for a long time. And we're just like, what the hell? Like, why would you go and like rock the boat here? This is ridiculous. But what had actually happened is that, but that our friend, uh, the boyfriend was right. It was only 12.7 grams. Plus they were gonna have to like check its purity. So that would have been reduced because if there's any like non-purity, they can't charge you for it. And so this guy was just basically looking for a bribe for no reason. So that's how corrupt it was in the jail. Like they're super manipulative. They're super trying to be your friend, but at the same time, he was just looking for money and he wasn't gonna help us. He was gonna to lie to us and tell us it was 27 grams and basically make it what it actually was already for nothing. And it's just, it's just a complete mindfuck. Now we get taken upstairs to another admin room and it's the same admin guy that told me he didn't believe me about my passport. Uh, and he's filling out some files on a computer. It's me, uh, my friend I was locked up with and then his girlfriend. Uh, and she's sort of semi-acting as a translator, which at this point I'm like, I hadn't questioned her translations yet, but now I am because they're telling me that I have to confirm what I signed yesterday. So I asked her to reread it. And what it actually said was that I was, we were signing that my friend was admitting to possession and for usage. And I was signing uh, for possession. And I was like, at what point? First of all, at what point was I arrested? And at what point did I admit to possession? And at this point I was just like, well, I'm not signing this. I'm literally like, I want a lawyer at this point. Like, get me a lawyer. I'm sick of this now. You've messed me around. I want a lawyer. And at this point he says, if you want a lawyer, I will make sure that you do not get bail. So I'm just like, what? Like, this is ridiculous. So I get, so at this point, my friend's girlfriend steps up, goes and calls a lawyer. And we speak to the lawyer and he says, do not say guilty. Do not say guilty. You can fight this. There's no way that you need to say guilty for this. Um, and he doesn't have any power on whether the court gives you bail or not. That's completely up to the court, nothing to do with him. Say not guilty, uh, change your plea, um, and we'll fight it. So it's a little bit light at the end of the tunnel, I guess. So I changed my plea to not guilty, and then we go back to jail, back to the same cell, again, another sleepless night, and the next day, which what seems like an eternity away, uh, we get put into a car, we get put into the back of a police car, which it's a two-seater police car, so it should, and it should take two people in the back. There was five of us in the back, so that was very comfortable. And then we get taken to the court, and we think this is gonna be like our big sort of decision day. Get taken to the court, get taken to a room, uh, with like, it's hard to explain, but imagine like, imagine like church pews on one side, and then just like, like staggered seating on the other side where the judge might come in. And we're just sitting there waiting to see what happens. Eventually a TV gets rolled in, like, similar to a TV you get, like you imagine when you're at school and they were like, oh, we're not teaching today, we're gonna give you a, t we're gonna give you a video and like they'd scroll one of those TVs in. And then my friend had like a speech prepared about like how he started smoking weed in Colorado and he had back pain, it's really helped him and that's why he was doing it. And my speech was, I didn't do anything. TV gets rolled in, there's a guy on the other side of the screen and this wasn't a judge at all. This was just confirming who we were and that we were registering at the court. So this was just like, what we thought was gonna be a big moment, completely just nothing. Then we get taken to another holding cell in the court. 
Now we're in the Holy Santa Court and it seems to be like, I think I described it before as like marijuana Wednesday because everyone in there seemed to have like a, a weed thing. Um, most of the people there or were fairly young and even the guards, these, these guards are way more jovial and they were like going out and helping you get food and like they were laughing at the fact that you're even there and a lot, it was only me and my friend that were Western and everyone else was Thai and they were just kind of just like, yeah, you guys are stupid and you shouldn't do this, blah, 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 but don't do it again. But they were, they were having fun with it. So it was a little bit more of a relaxed atmosphere, but I couldn't relax because I was so stressed out. I hadn't slept for two days. I was lying there just waiting to see what happened next. And I just, I had no power over what happened next. I was just hoping that someone, uh, hopefully my friend's girlfriend was working on bail and we could get out, but who knows? We could literally see the prison van that would have taken you to what they call the Bangkok Hilton, where you get lost in the system when you go there. Like, you ain't, you, you, there's a decent chance you're not coming back out, not just because of the admin. Eventually, we do get bail. Uh, our friend's girlfriend, with the same lawyer that we spoke to, saw it out of the bail. I think it was like 30,000 baht, which off the top of my head is about $900 US. And you get that back when you turn up on your court date. So we're out of jail, we're heading home, we're exhausted. I, I literally said to my friend, I think I'm in love with your girlfriend now after, after she just got me out of jail. Like, thank you so much. And we just went home, spoke to my parents about what happened and just literally slept for what seemed like 16 hours. Next day, we start thinking about logistically, like what's happening. And we think about things like speaking to the embassy. We had to extend, our visa had expired now. So we had to make sure we extended that. Uh, but we can't extend, uh, it was the weekend now. So we couldn't speak to the embassy and we couldn't speak to the visa immigration. So we had to wait till Monday before we could do that. The third friend that we live with, his visa had finished, so he just went home. There was no point in getting involved. Just don't bother extending and just head home and then maybe come back if you want to come back to time in the future. But our, our contract on the place was going to finish as well, so he just went home. The lawyer had actually told us that we don't need to extend our visas during the court proceedings because it's sort of covered because you're supposed to go to court. It's kind of a weird scenario where I don't want to stay in Thailand, I want to leave. But legally to stay, I have to go to the immigration office to tell them that I want to stay in order to go to court and then potentially go to jail, even though I don't want to stay. And it, yeah, it's very convoluted, but you just have to go through this process. And the lawyer told me that the, the court the court sort of summons covers that. I did some more research, it turned out that was wrong. So now I'm a bit tilted that the lawyer has told me something wrong. So now I'm shopping around for lawyers. Eventually we do find some lawyers. I don't know how we put them in the end actually, but we end up hiring these lawyers, going down to the office, explaining to them what happened. And they said, we'll charge you a thousand pounds each for covering all your court dates, anything the court wants, basically just all in conferencing service. It's just going to cost you a thousand pounds regardless of how long it takes. And we didn't really want to shop around too much because we just wanted to store it. So we, we just paid. So the next few months were pretty tilting. Basically a combination of going to a lawyer's office, which was Bangkok traffic, by the way, is horrendous. And every single thing seemed to be as couldn't be further apart from each other. So the court was on like one side of Bangkok, the immigration on the other side and the lawyers on the other side. Yeah, we could have picked maybe a different lawyer, but it just, it, it didn't matter. There was just, it's just traffic everywhere. You're talking an hour and a half to get anywhere, which is just super, super tilting. Dealing with the lawyers was just a turn for me, to be honest, because they would chat in Thai the whole time. So we'd explain the story. Then they would speak in Thai to our friend's girlfriend. Our friend's girlfriend would then explain it in English to us. And again, there was a few translation issues. And then I would have a question. So I'd ask a question to my friend, who then asked his girlfriend, who then asked the lawyers, then answer to her, and then she'd tell him, and then he'd tell me. And then by the end, that comes down the line, it hasn't really answered my question. And then he'd get told if I asked the same question again. I was like, well, you didn't really quite answer my question. And this was causing a bit of a rift between all three of us, because it was, it was a pretty stressful time anyway. So this rift between like the three of us, like me and my friend and his girlfriend, was kind of getting a bit bigger. And at the end of our contract of our Airbnb, we decided just to part ways, and I moved closer to the court just to save some of the travel. And we knew there was a big day coming up on the 1st of November. I remember it being the 1st of November because we had to be there at like eight, eight o'clock in the morning. And I walked to the court, I think I was up at like seven o'clock in the morning and we knew it was a big day. I didn't know what was gonna happen because every big day so far was just like, oh, the big day could be to announce that there's gonna be a big day in a month. So we didn't know how big this day was gonna be. And I remember my friend not being there at like eight o'clock and I was like, oh my God, this is a big day. Why are you not here at eight o'clock? And it was because his girlfriend had been out the night before for Halloween and she'd just thrown up all the way. And I just remember him getting out of the car just being super, super angry at her because he was like half an hour late. Luckily, we still deal with tie time in the court, so the court didn't start till half an hour late either, but he was furious with her. And I remember it was just because she went out for Halloween and she was just, I was like, why didn't you get a taxi? He's like, because she kept saying she was going to be two minutes. And then by the time she, it was too late for me to get a taxi and I had to wait for her and he was just, but anyway, 
We go to the court, this is a big day. We know it's a big day because now instead of having the junior lawyers with us, we've got the adult lawyers. Um, and we get to the court, we've actually got a proper translator as well. And he comes up to us and goes, hello, I'm your translator today. And I'm trying to be friendly, but at the same time, I'm a bit like, well, what the hell is gonna happen today? One side of the courtroom, you've got a bunch of people in like orange jumpsuits. So it looks like they've either been inducted today or maybe they're getting out or maybe they're getting resentenced. And then on that side of the court, it's like people in the real clothes. I'm like, maybe we're gonna be on the other side in a minute. Two judges come out and they're behind like a perspex glass type thing. And me and my friend get called at first. And then, so it's like the lawyer, the translator, my friend and me and two judges. And they're speaking in Thai. And eventually, I think, to be fair, I hadn't even, even at this point, I didn't know where I was going to say guilty or not guilty. I was still deciding basically. And because people like my mom and dad would be like, don't say guilty because then you admitted it. And you know, they're similar to films where like, that's a terrible thing to do. You should all say not guilty, not guilty, fight it. But I was told if I said not guilty, it would probably be like 50-50 whether, whether I get it. And I would have to have a court date to actually like, then it would go to trial, right? And if it does go to trial at this court, we're talking minimum three months to get a court date, probably longer. Pro and then you've got to go through the actual court thing. And then it's only 50-50. And yeah, it was just, I was so tired and stressed with the whole thing at this point. I was just like, I just want it done which is I guess what they wanted and that's what they got. So I said guilty. So I say guilty and now we're getting sentenced. So the, the judge is saying something in Thai and the translator says to me, okay, because you said guilty, you're gonna go to jail for 30 days. And he's just smiling at me like this is the nicest thing that could have happened to me today. But because you said guilty, the court will show you mercy and you're only gonna have to go to jail for 15 days. How nice, only 15 days. But if you pay the fine, take my money. Please just take my money. If you pay the fine today of 2,500 baht, which is about maximum $50, or I don't even know what it is now, but it's some small amount of money, um, you don't have to go to jail and the court will let you off today. And I'm like, all of this for $55. So my friend paid my fine, Nice guy. And then I was, I don't know, it just didn't feel real after all that stress and all that kind of like anxiety of what was going on. Um, I got a letter from the court, which meant that I could get on a plane to go home. Literally looked at the flights that night. I paid like 500 pound for a one-way flight home. Turned up at the uh, airport. They were a bit like, apparently on my file at the airport, it hadn't quite updated yet, but I had this letter and they checked it all through and I was fine, got on the plane. Landed in Heathrow, I live in Birmingham, so I'm in my shorts and t-shirt in Heathrow, it's freezing cold. Uh, get on a bus to Birmingham, get a taxi home, ring my mom, go, mom, you're not gonna believe what's happening, pretend to like cry down the phone to her and go, I'm going to jail for 30 days, and I'll just put the phone down, and then just open the door, walk in, and she's just there still on the phone, like, I'm gonna kill you. And that's my story about going to jail in Thailand. Pretty stressful, looking back, don't let the police in. Second thing looking back is, try and push the, pay a fine, as opposed to letting it get to the courthouse or letting it get to the jail or whatever. Even if you do sound a little bit bad, it's probably gonna work out better if you just don't have to go through that. Um, lawyer wise, not sure, but I don't think I don't think I necessarily needed one for that, but that's my experience, not, not yours. Um, but yeah, I went straight back to time about six months later, so I still love the place. So, but that's my story, thank you for following. Please like and subscribe and check out my other videos. Do appreciate you watching this all the way through. Hope you enjoyed it. And please don't comment about how I could have done something differently because you've got hindsight now.